Welcome to Small Business Celebration, where we're continuing our series on small business owners that are getting the move on. And our guest this week, well, he's going to show us how, as a business owner, you can increase its valuation just based upon the services you provide. This is Small Business Celebration. Welcome, where we chat with real business owners who have real success and learn from them about what works, what doesn't, and who want you to know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel and it's not a train. Join us where you can learn something that you can use today to grow a strong and profitable business. Welcome to Small Business Celebration, and our guest this week is Steve McGar, the owner of Current Valuation Services. Welcome to Small Business Celebration. Yeah, thanks for having me. For visionaries who don't know who you are, who are you, and what is it that you do? So my name's Steve McGar, and I am a certified general uh, real estate appraiser. I do uh, all different types of residential appraisal work. The reason we're here talking with Steve today is that it is no secret the real estate market is white hot. The challenge is, is finding the right properties, whether they be for you and your family, whether you're doing them for investment properties, and finding out where all the skeletons and the bones are buried, mm -hmm. so that when you make that purchase, you make that investment, you can make the right decision. And the great thing about you, Steve, is that you've been in business for how many years? Uh, well, I've been appraising for about 25 years now. Okay, so you just got started. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yes, yes. Yeah. And yet, you appraise for some of the biggest names in Kern County, don't you? Who are who are some of the so who are some of the sellers that you appraise residential homes for? We uh, we work with all kinds of different clients from attorneys to uh, CPAs. Um, we we work with a lot of the local real estate agents. Uh, I do a lot of work with John Busby, and um, I worked with Gary Belter, Mary Christensen on some of the big houses. Uh, a lot of different agents out there. In California, you can buy a house as is. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to use a realtor. Some might argue that's a bad idea. You also don't necessarily have to use an appraiser. First of all, for those of us that know nothing about this, why is having an appraiser such as yourself such an important thing? Well, it's always a good idea to have an appraisal. The appraisal is an uh, independent valuation on a property. Mm -hmm. So we can come in and uh, just verify that the property is worth whatever they're paying for it or not. Mm -hmm. uh, and we can do a uh, unbiased assessment of the property. We can uh, measure it. Uh, and generally, that's what we'll do. We'll go out and we'll inspect the property. We'll measure the property. That way we know if the uh, floor plan's been changed, any additions have, have come to the property. Um, we take all our notes on the property and then we can compare it to other uh, properties around and adjust for differences to get to a, a market value on that property. So you really want to know uh, what it is you're buying. It's a big investment for a lot of people. By the way, before I forget, we are here yeah. at Current Appraisal. So if you hear the phone ringing, you hear conversations happening, you hear the doors opening and closing, it's because it's during business hours and business is actually happening here at Current Evaluation. That's correct, we are going. There's a reputation for within the industry that when you hire an appraiser that comes out, they are going to look for every possible thing that's wrong with the house on the property, and everything is a catastrophe, and everything, you know, the roof is always falling, and mm -hmm. you know, the, the, and it doesn't matter what the, the seller has told you, they're lying. Mm -hmm. I'm, I know I've got over the top a little bit on this, but yeah. what is the realistic assessment, and, and, and how do you approach evaluating a property? One key point there is that uh, my inspection for the appraisal standpoint is much different than a home inspection. Really? How so? And a lot of people will confuse that and, right. and that's very important. What, what is um, the difference? Well, a home inspector, 
will actually uh, you know climb up on your roof they're going to open up your air conditioner go through your attic uh, check out your ducting very very hands-on with the property mm -hmm. uh, versus us on the appraisal side uh, we're just doing a visual inspection of the property so that we can collect the information on the property what kind of condition it's in what kind of improvements have been made what kind of features does it have um, you know, it's just much more visual in nature and less hands-on um, simply for the purpose of, uh, of our appraisal report so that we can see how those differences, amenities, and whatnot affect the value, the overall value of the property. What does affect the value of property? <laughs> a lot of things. Um, square footage is a big one. You really? Know, uh, the size of the home. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're going to, generally, you're going to have uh, much more value in a 2,000 square foot home than you would in a 1,200 square foot home. You know, that that's a big difference right there. Um, the type of roof, the type of windows that it might have, um, the kitchen, has it been updated or not? Um, yeah, just um, overall condition, paint, carpet. More specifically, I've got a, a, a former guest mm -hmm. here on Small Business Celebration that is selling a property and they're replacing the windows and they're putting in solar and that sort of thing. How much does that, in general, affect the valuation of the property? Uh, you know, quite a bit. It, it has a big impact on value. And, uh, you know, that's why, that's another uh, reason that it's really good to have an appraiser involved. A lot of times the banks will, in many cases, a bank will order just a, uh, automated valuation on a property. That's mm -hmm. kind of a current trend nowadays. The automated valuation does a general uh, search on the parameter of the neighborhood and pulls sales and looks at the price per square foot and applies a certain price per square foot to the house to get a value. I mean, right. just slam, bam, right. done, you know? Without actually taking a look at the property. Without actually taking a look at the property. Right. And that's where the appraiser can make a big difference with an actual real estate appraisal because we can get in and we can see what's been done. We can see that that kitchen's been remodeled and we can see that, uh, you know, it's got new dual pane windows or uh, conversely, we might see stains on the on the ceiling and signs of a roof leak. And, and now we know, okay, there's, a, there's an issue with a dated roof on this house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You said a moment ago that you're an independent entity in doing this. Does your appraisal, the value of the property, does that get turned into the county for property tax values or is that are you a separate entity from the county? No, completely separate from the county. And uh, no, my appraisal does not go <clears throat> in most cases unless it's there has been some appraisal work I've done specifically where they are challenging their assessments. Mm. And in that case, yes, they would submit it to the county and say, hey, your square footage is wrong and we need to be assessed based on this size or, you know. Uh, but uh, absent that, just a general refinance or a purchase transaction, no, it does not go to the, uh, to the county. It's a, it's a confidential and with the lender. For what you do, you are not a general appraiser. You're actually the next step, next level up from there. First of all, what is your designation? Yeah, so uh, I am a certified general appraiser, which allows me to appraise all forms of real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, however, I've chosen in my business to focus solely on residential properties, mm -hmm. and we try to be the best that we can at appraising residential properties. Um, what is that designation called? The, I, I'm designated through the Appraisal Institute as an SRA. And what is that? Uh, SRA, it's, a, uh, it's an advanced appraisal designation. Uh, it takes quite a bit of education, uh, it takes a peer-reviewed demonstration report that we have to write and um, just a lot of time and oversight to get the designation. Uh, but essentially, I, I like to equate it to the difference between a, a bookkeeper versus a CPA. Mm. You know, it's just an advanced um, designation that, that certifies that you've done the extra work and you've taken the extra classes and uh, you're held to a higher professional standard. If visioneers want to get in touch with you to have their property appraised, how do they do that? We have a website out there, uh, kernvalpro.com. Uh, you can reach me at steve at kernvalpro.com or by phone 661-489-3652. And when we come back, we're going to talk about something that scares Steve half to death. When we come right back. <laughs> uh oh. 
can't wait. <laughs> Hi, I'm John Busby with Team Busby, and over the years, many people have asked me, what price ranges do you sell? As you can see at Team Busby, we sell all price ranges, 80,000 to 2 million. It's a seller's market. If you're thinking remotely of selling your home, now's the time to sell it. There's buyers that are on the fence, some of them not even thinking about selling. When I show them the values of today's market, they say, oh my gosh, I should put it on the market now. When you call my team, Team Busby, you get a voice, not a voicemail. 410-SELL, 410-7355. I'm here with Steve McGar, the owner of Kern Valuation Services, and our visionary question comes from Karen who asks, the last thing I want to do is get out and talk to people. Oh. It's a chore every day I do so. What advice do you have for introverts like me to keep going out every day and interface with the public? Oh, I know it well. <laughs> Karen, I can feel your pain. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I mean, just naturally, uh, uh, we appraisers tend to be very introverted. Right. And uh, we're on that analytical scope, and we like to, you know, be in our little hole and, uh, and not interact as mu that much. So, um, yeah, I feel it all the time. But, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I've had a lot of coaching over the years. In fact, uh, you know Sue Watson very oh, well, yeah, right? Oh, yeah, former guest here on Small Business Absolutely. Solution, right? Sue, Sue's great, and she's always constantly pushing me to get out of my comfort zone and get out there and do things. and, and Including network. being on a podcast Absolutely. and YouTube channel. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, so luckily, I, I try to take that advice and... Uh, Although you know it's a it's an uncomfortable place, it uh, it's paid off time and time again to, to get out there. You know, it's just uh, it's so good to to network. Um, mm. I, I've I've um, you know I, I'm part of the EAKC group and what's and EAKC? The Executive Association of Kern County, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a group of local business owners that get together on a weekly basis and uh, you have breakfast together and uh, get to hear a speaker and network with other people and uh, you know and it's been great for me. It, it puts me out there, and what I find is it has me talk about my business, and it has me talking with others about my business, mm -hmm. and it and the more you do it, the easier it gets, you know. So um, that's that's kind of been my thing. Uh, when when I see a good opportunity arise, uh, in fact, you came in and asked me to do the podcast, and of course, my gut instinct is no way, I, there's, <laughs> there's no way I'm ever going to do that. But right, right. on the other hand, I've got Sue on the other shoulder saying, "Steve, get out there. You got to do this. You know, get out there and do it." So uh, I, I try to listen and try to just push myself beyond that uh, uncomfortable situation and, and get out and do it. Has the growth so. of your business benefited you from stretching the iron limits and going out and actually? talking to people. Oh, absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. People need to know you when you're in business. Uh, and Bakersfield's a small town. And mm. uh, the more you can network and the more people you know, just business flows. And, and when they know you and they trust you, they like to do business with you. Yeah. And I always get a kick out of when people say, Bakersfield is a small town. There's 400,000 people who live here. <laughs> in this small town. In this small town. Yeah, yeah. But this is California. It's all relative. We're like the 12th largest city or something like that. Right, right? Exactly. Right. But it's also a town where it seems like everybody knows everybody. Yes. And networking is so important. Why is networking such a big deal? It's just a matter of contacts and uh, being able to have somebody you can pick up the phone and, and bounce ideas off of. Mm. Uh, you know, we tend to be, uh, at least in my situation, you know, I, I can get pretty isolated in my job and in my office. And, uh, you know, it's, it's nice to be able to, to bounce ideas off of other people as a small business owner. Mm -hmm. You know, things, things come up and uh, uh, issues arise and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's good to talk to other people. Right. We talked a little bit about this before I hit record, but what was the first job or first thing you sold? First thing? Uh, I like to call it lawn care business. <laughs> Which is a very <laughs> fancy way of saying. <laughs> I mowed lawns. <laughs> and so, you were, what, 27 when you did this? Yeah, thing? absolutely. No, at, at the age of 12. <laughs> okay. At the age of 12, I, I convinced my mom to let me uh, load up her, her minivan and... Uh, you bought a lawnmower and uh, got out there and you know, sold services to other people. You didn't grow up in Kern County. No, I didn't. I grew up over in the Antelope Valley, Lancaster, Palmdale area. Where it's desert. Absolutely. And you're mowing people's lawns in a desert. <laughs> in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
why was getting out and mowing lawns, why was this such a big thing and such an important deal to you as a kid? Oh, I loved it. it uh, you know, I, I loved as a kid just to get out and have the opportunity to earn some money, a mm. little extra cash. Um, you know, I, I started out mowing lawns, uh, again, with my mom's help, you know, and she'd be there taking me from place to place and uh, on a regular basis. And then uh, I got involved with my uncle, who was... Um, a real estate owner mm -hmm. and owned quite a few rental properties and so I used to do odd jobs for him and paint houses and change coolers and uh, you know really get hands-on with uh, with rental property and, and I think that that kind of grew that's kind of uh, the basis for why I'm doing what I am today you know I got that early on appreciation for real estate and mm -hmm. um, when I got out of college I knew I wanted to do something related to real estate and uh, appraisal just kind of fell into the mix did the sense so. of entrepreneurialism come from your father? It did, absolutely. I think so, yes. What did he, he do? So my father owned uh, two Italian restaurants over in the Antelope Valley. Mm -hmm. So I also grew up working with him and working through the restaurants and uh, and just, uh, you know, loved to see that he could, uh, you know, work as hard as he did and bring home an income and, uh, you know, uh, have a successful restaurant and lots of great relationships with his customers and, you know, people just love to come in and talk to him and have a good meal and uh, I just just respect him and all right. I did. You have owned this business for seven years. Yes. But you've been an appraiser for 25. Yes. What is the major difference, other than the sleepless nights and the very curious letters from the California State Franchise Tax Board, and payroll taxes, but what what's the major difference that you've experienced between being an employee of an appraiser and owning your own business? You know, it's uh, it's a whole different world owning your own business. How so? And uh, you know, it, it's nice to work for somebody else and and work those you know nine to five hours and punch out and go home and forget about everything and. Uh, you know, when you have your own business, uh, you don't ever punch out. <laughs> there, there's always something going on, you know, right. and um, and there's a lot of issues that uh, that arise along the way. Um, you know, I've, I've never been one for HR, but all of a sudden you're thrown into HR management. And uh, there's been plenty of times I've complained to my wife and said, I just want to be an appraiser. I don't want to deal with <laughs> HR issues, you know. Um, and yet, at the same time, you yes. enjoy being a business owner. Absolutely. Why is that? You know, it's just, um, it's freedom, and, and I enjoy making choices, mm -hmm. and I enjoy, uh, you know, building a great team and being able to have a good culture inside our business. You know, I, I, I love our employees. We have a great group of employees. What is freedom? For me, is just the ability to decide where we're going to take the business. There's all kinds of different opportunities out there, and uh, we have the freedom of choice to, as to which direction we want to go. Um, you know, inside of appraisal, it's like, do you appraise just the normal tract homes or do you want to get into the legal valuation side of things or um, work with CPAs or, you know, there's all kinds of different paths that you can go. And, uh, and it's, it's fun setting up uh, those directions and being able to, you know, head, choose head, your own head, adventure. Choose your own adventure, yes. Uh, <laughs> right. When we come back, we're going to talk about a question that has been coming in quite a bit on our social media feeds about being overwhelmed and about the amount of work and business that the current economic client has been generating when we come right back. The reason we're here with Steve McGarr, the owner of Current Valuation Services, is because of a visioneer question that came from a visioneer just like you. They wanted to find out about this white hot real estate market and finding uh, what is an appraiser and what is it that they do. So if you've got a question, you've got a thought, something that you'd like to learn about here on Small Business Celebration, reach out to us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram today. I'm here with Steve McGar, the owner of Current Valuation Services, and our visionary question comes from Rick who asks, I'm becoming overwhelmed by the amount of work my business is generating, but what I do is so complicated, only I can do it, and it would take years to train someone else to do it. What do I do? You know, so I, we face that in the appraisal world all the time. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, 
you know, we like to think that uh, we're the only one that can do what we do, mm. and uh, nobody else can do it, and they can't do it the same, and it won't be done right, and whatnot. And um, gosh, that's such a uh, that's such a hurdle that we all have to face. Mm. And but I, I think that there are really um, there are good people out there, and we just have to let them do what they do and do it well. And when you take the time to train your employees and your staff, and um, you know, and, and like around here, we, we just we have an open door policy where they, they can come to me at any time, so they're not afraid to come in with questions. And a lot of times, we end up learning things together. But eventually, uh, they they get to a point where they get very good on their own, and uh, you just kind of kind of sit back and trust in that education and allow them to become their own people and the, their own experts and uh, and the more you can do that you know you can kind of build that base and that allows you and, and me in this scenario to kind of sit back and become more of a reviewer which mm -hmm. is really it was nice when I was able to get to that point where uh, you know I could have other people out doing some appraisal work and they come back in and I'm reviewing a final product and it just allows us to more generate more business now I don't do that on every report and there's still you know, I'm still very hands-on, but mm -hmm. uh, but um, trying myself to head more and more that direction. You know, you brought up an important word: trust. Trust. How do you get beyond yourself and trust that your employees can do as good a job, if not better, than yourself? Well, I think that. Um, you know, trust comes over time, and uh, you just have to invest a lot of time into your business, take the time to work on your business, and in my case, develop. We've developed systems where um, we try to automate processes as much as possible, uh, so that they're easy for people to learn and to follow a specific routine. Um, and again, with us, one of the nice things is that uh, we have multiple sets of reviews, multiple stages of review, so that we have different sets of eyes on the same appraisal assignment, mm -hmm. so that that helps us maintain our quality and it helps us catch errors as we go through the process and put out a better product. And um, just over time, you, you, you just build trust with one another and you kind of give them a little bit of room and, and let them, you know, give them room to make some mistakes or maybe struggle with a couple of issues before you step in and, um, you know, take over on things or, or provide your assistance, you know. Um, but eventually that, that just builds their competency. It sounds like that if you're overwhelmed right now, you're going to be a little more overwhelmed for a short period of time as you're training somebody else. Yes. How do you go through and personally allow that to happen? Because remember, the trust is the, is the primary issue on here. So how are you willing to allow yourself to let go enough to be able to trust somebody else and then be able to do the extra work and the effort to put mm -hmm. that training into somebody else? I think you just have to have that goal in mind mm -hmm. and you know and keep that front and center and when you know you're working for a certain goal then you're willing to put in that extra time that it takes uh, you know to, to get there um, it's it's it might be a little bit more work today but it pays off down the road you mm -hmm. know and things do get better you know <laughs> there is light at the end of the tunnel right <laughs> and it's not a train and it's not a train <laughs> yeah. yes. <clears throat> You yourself have experienced the fruits of this because you're now starting to get to the point in your business where mm -hmm. the business isn't running you. You're allowing to, you're able to, to run the business and you're starting to get some more free time back. You know, it's um, personally, it's just allowed me more to focus on my, my daughters and uh, the things that they're up to. Uh, my youngest enjoys playing volleyball, so I love watching her games and catching her practices and... Uh, you know, more time home with the wife and cooking dinners together, and uh, it's it's all good. Uh, now, one of the things too that you're also doing is you're starting to get back into scuba diving. Yeah, that's uh, that's a goal of mine. Yes. Why yeah. is that? 
Uh, you know, my oldest daughter's taken an interest in it, mm-hmm. and she's recently gotten certified to dive. And so uh, that's been uh, just kind of one of those bucket list goals to get out and dive with my daughter and get back into it. What has scuba diving taught you that you apply to your business? <laughs> Probably don't get in over your head. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. One of the worst mistakes I ever made early on scuba diving, I went down to Cozumel with my wife and uh, we went scuba diving down there and uh, it's probably three or four dives in and figured, oh, I got this. I know what I'm doing. No problem. And we decided to go on a wreck dive. And And what's a wreck dive? A wreck dive is we were down about... 40, 50 feet down and inside a ship that was oh, a, a so wreck. Oh, a ship that sunk. It okay. was a sunken ship down okay. in the reef there. And uh, yeah, so we got diving down inside and we're going through the corridors and passages, passageways and down inside the ship. And all of a sudden I started to get a little anxious. And because I got a little anxious, I started breathing a little heavier. And next thing you know, I'm running low on air in the middle of a ship <laughs> and started to panic and... Um, yeah, that was that was a heck of an experience. I the dive master. Luckily, we were. I had a, I had good people around me, right? Right, sure. The dive master. I I, I you know uh, signaled to him. He came over and he let me breathe off of his tank, and we kind of made our way out of the ship and back up. And you know, it was a good story at the end of the day. But uh, I, I learned right there, you know, not to get uh, overly confident and in over your head. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. So. What is one of the books, or one of the books on your top ten list that you've enjoyed reading? You know, I would have to say uh, I, I think um, either uh, either Rich Dad Poor Dad or uh, Financial Peace. Okay, we, we've been big Dave Ramsey fans. Okay, and um, Financial Peace by David Ramsey. By Dave Ramsey. Okay, and why yeah. that? You know, it just uh, early on in our marriage, uh, my wife and I were on quite different pages, mm-hmm. and she was a responsible one. I not so much. <laughs> and uh, you know, it was just a, a, a really good book to just get all our finances in order, and it was some. We were able to find some common ground and led to some great experiences or, or conversations between one another. You know right. that uh, um, we could really uh, get a plan together and, and get on the same page financially, and so that was uh, that was good. What makes you wake up every morning and open your business? You know, um, I really enjoy the opportunity to have the business and to wake up and decide where we're going to go and what we're going to do and bring in new business. Mm -hmm. Uh, I enjoy being able to help others inside the business. And... um, you know, there's there's just such good people out there. I love being part of business in Bakersfield. I love associating with other people and other professionals and uh, seeking the advice of other people and conversations. And it's just um, just a good place to be. You know, it's just uh, there's there's constantly the ups and downs in business. And uh, yeah, you you struggle through that valley, but the the peaks, you know, in the distance, it's down the road, and and keep keep going for it. You know, there's. Uh, there's so many people here in Bakersfield willing to help. I mean, we've got a great network of help around us, and uh, we just have to get out of our comfort zone and have those conversations, or at least for me, that, that was an uncomfortable conversation in many cases. And you know, once I realized that I could reach out to others, it's, you just, you'd start to realize how many people are willing to share advice and willing to help you and give you direction. And, and uh, you know, once you start networking and, and, and building those networks of help, um, you know, you, you start to see the rewards in the business and you start to see the volume coming in and, and people begin to trust you and like doing business with you and, it, you know, it, it all gets better. If visioners want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? By email, steve at kernvalpro.com, uh, by our website, kernvalpro.com, or by phone, 661-489-3652. Well, Steve, this has been a real privilege. Thank you very much for joining us here on Small Business Celebration. Absolutely. My pleasure, Michael. And I'll be right back with my final thought. Hi, I'm John Busby with Team Busby. And over the years, many people have asked me, what price ranges do you sell? As you can see at Team Busby, we sell all price ranges, 80000 to $2 million. It's a seller's market. If you're thinking remotely of selling your home, now's the time to sell it. 
There's buyers that are on the fence, some of them not even thinking about selling. When I show them the values of today's market, they say, oh my gosh, I should put on the market now. When you call my team, Team Busby, you get a voice, not a voicemail. 410-SELL, 410-7355. A while ago, I was going through a local art gallery when I came upon a painting that really stuck out to me. It was painted in the style of Rembrandt, and it depicted a 17th century inn. Now, it was painted in cross-section, and outside of the inn, it was raining very heavily. And pounding on the walls and pounding on the doors were all the bill collectors and tax collectors trying to get into the inn. Meanwhile, inside of the inn, it was utter chaos. You had patrons ordering and eating and drinking and celebrating and the wait staff running around trying to accommodate all of them. And meanwhile, there was another employee that was running around placing buckets to catch the rainwater that was leaking through the roof to get in. Amongst the chaos, however, down in the corner was the innkeeper and his wife. They sat on the floor where they were teaching their toddler how to draw. This is the time of year where we have come out of the holiday season and we've also come to the realization that almost all the New Year's resolutions we have made are not gonna work out. And the whole frontal assault of life has hit us squarely in the jaw. But this is also the time to be like the innkeeper and his wife. This is the time to realize why you are building and growing your business. Amongst the chaos, the innkeeper and his wife were there for their son as they taught him how to draw. Later, I got to thinking about it further and I began to wonder, the artist who painted the painting, was he the innkeeper, the wife, or perhaps he was the toddler? I hope you enjoyed our conversation this week with Steve McGar, the owner of Kern Valuation Services, and I hope you learned something that you can use today to grow a strong and profitable business, and we'll see you here again next week. <clears throat> See, black screens are good things. Recording. And we're recording. We're recording. We're recording. <clears throat> um, by the way, did you hear about the kid napping at school? Uh, no, I did not. That's fine. He woke up. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. All right, we're recording. We're recording. And uh, I didn't know you had three heads. No, yeah. <laughs> I'm here.